Welding fume has been linked to multiple forms of cancer. The World Health Organization's International Agency for the Research on Cancer classified it as a carcinogen in 2017. Studies have concluded that welders run an increased risk of lung cancer of up to 43% when compared to those who have never welded or been exposed to welding fume. Welding fume is also linked to a myriad of other short-term and long-term adverse health effects. In fact, there are countless studies that show welding fume is bad for health. While they have accurately identified the problem, very few have been able to define and compare the relative effectiveness of the product solutions available that can control exposure to welding fume. That is, until now. We were definitely looking for answers here. So the intent of this study was to compare three different techniques for uh, fume reduction that are freely available and generally used in the industry for workers. We used an on-gun, uh, which is an engineering control. We used local exhaust ventilation, which is also an engineering control. And we used a powered air supply um, respirator, uh, which is classed as a, a personal protective um, equipment control or PPE control. Dr Ryan Kift at Central Queensland University and a team of workplace health and occupational hygiene specialists analysed welding fume control methods across a range of the most commonly used welding processes. This was based on a survey of more than 1,300 welders across Australia. It's the welder who is typically exposed to the highest concentrations of welding fume and as a result has the highest exposure risk in the workplace. The onus is on the employer, who must ensure that the welder's exposure does not exceed the relevant welding fume standards and that it's reduced to as low as reasonably practicable. The results of the study found that the PAPR was the most effective control at reducing welder exposure. During the study we were able to measure the welding fume concentration both inside of the hood and also external to the hood and we found that there was a reduction by more than 2,600 times from outside to inside of that respirator. That performance is indicative of more than 52 times the current Australian and New Zealand standard for that respirator type. It's also an employer's legal responsibility to reduce welding fume exposure to as low as reasonably practicable for all persons, not just the welder. On-gun fume extraction and hooded capture local exhaust ventilation are two common methods used to reduce welding fume exposure to all workers. This is done by capturing welding fume at the source and removing it from the environment. The key results of the study for removing welding fume from the work environment, the study found that the on-gun LEV extraction outperformed the hood-style extraction system. The added benefit of the on-gun LEV extraction is that it is permanently fixed to the uh, handle, which means it moves with the worker. The hood-style extraction system needs to be manually repositioned by the worker uh, so we can have it to be less effective at times once it gets outside of the manufacturer specifications. The law in Australia and New Zealand clearly states that if there's any remaining risk after higher controls, such as engineering controls, have been implemented, it must be minimised with suitable personal protective equipment, PPE. The results of this study give clear and practical guidance on the most effective engineering and PPE control methods to reduce welding fume exposure. The study was very interesting. It showed that the uh, on-gun fume extraction gave uh, over 90% removal of welding fume. In Australia and New Zealand regulations and codes, uh, the aim is to minimise exposure, use of high-level controls like extract ventilation can bring the level of welding fume down. What remains, the risk that remains from the exposure that's left can be dealt with by PPE. The PAPR used in this study showed very high levels of protection, removing over 99.95% of the fume exposure for the welder. Industry needs to actually uh, take notice of these results because there's not a lot of studies internationally 
um, and certainly no other studies in Australia that provide the information that's been provided here. What this study provides us is the confidence to apply these controls in the workplace to, to protect workers. Uh, it means that there are no excuses now for not applying these controls because of maybe perceptions of ineffectiveness. Um, and that's part of the importance that reports like these, that, that uh, studies like these bring to industry. Welding can and should be considered a safe occupation. This independent study shows that with the appropriate and the right controls in place, exposure to welding fume can be minimised effectively. Welding is a safe occupation when people understand the hazards and risks associated with the welding and take the appropriate precautions to avoid uh, problems associated with those risks. For example, weld fume. The fact that the research demonstrated that the uh, fume levels that the welders uh, could be exposed to could be actually minimised using uh, this sort of technology is really, really important. Without effective protection, welders are exposed to a carcinogenic substance. The welding industry is now armed with conclusive evidence scrutinised in a peer-reviewed scientific study that can help keep welders and workers safe from fumes. For more information on this study or for guidance on welding fume product controls, you can go to the link on the screen.